Good afternoon. Thank you, Liam, for the introduction. It's my great pleasure to be here today. And uh, I have to say, this is the first time I'm expanding my social networks uh, in the Colon environment. So it's very exciting. So uh, Dr. Uh, Forbes Blom has uh, you know, introduced, uh, set the stage for what I'm going to talk about, so clinical applications of those concepts. My disclosure is I'm receiving honorarium for this presentation from Leslie Health Sciences, and I received a research grant and was the overall uh, principal investigator for this clinical study of hypoallergenicity of whey uh, extensively hydrolyzed formula with two HMOs. So what are the objectives for my talk? My objectives are to describe the physiologic role of HMOs in the development of oral tolerance in infancy, a little bit similar to what Liz has done, but also to describe and primarily describe the emerging evidence uh, supporting the addition of HMO as an important component uh, of hypoallergenic whey extensively hydrolyzed formula for the management of cow's milk protein allergy. So some of that will be you know, enforcing the message that Liz has already given to you, saying that the breast milk is really the gold standard for infant nutrition. So there's a good reason why uh, HMOs com uh, compose the, uh, you know, the third most uh, pre prevalent uh, or the largest um, component in the solid fraction of uh, uh, human breast milk. And a good uh, explanation for that is that they are really um, very resistant to digestion, so 99% survive in the gastrointestinal tract, and they really enrich the um, gut microbial populations in those beneficial bacteria, particularly bifidobacteria. And you know that bifidobacteria are really a great source of short-chain fatty acids that are important for development of oral tolerance in the gut. But as Liz already told you, at the same time, they really uh, restrict potential pathogen. They sort of compete for the pathogen by providing decoylectin binding sites that mimic similar structures on the epi human epithelium. Um, but there is another sort of facet to the function of the, uh, of the HMOs or the benef benefits of HMOs is that they may, there's some evidence in vitro that they may have a direct effect on monocyte dendritic cells that are presenting antigens to uh, T regulatory lymphocytes and basically expand those T regs and also stimulate them to produce uh, interleukin 10. Again, the cytokine that is really very important in oral tolerance uh, induction. So on the, on the left graph, you're seeing just the flow cytometry showing that addition of the HMOs, even in the presence of LPS, is, is expanding the population of CD25 positive, FOXP3 positive uh, T cells, which are which are just the phenotype of the regulatory T cells. And then on the right in the panel B, you just see the statistical significance uh, in that expansion. And in the panel C, you see increasing uh, production of IL-10. So this is very, very important because even sort of independently, you know, in the test tube, independent of the presence of the uh, microbiota, this is really driving the tolerance, uh, tolerogenic immune responses. So just to reinforce also that HMO composition varies between women. Uh, it only partially depends on genetics, but also not on epigenetics. But it might explain why sometimes the studies where look at the breastfeeding provide uh, some conflicting results. So HMO fucosylation is mediated by two, by two um, enzymes. Um, one is uh, uh, coded by a secretor gene and another one by the Lewis gene which also determine the mother's secretor and Lewis blood status. The non-secretant mothers uh, actually have um, low, very low levels or lack most of the fucosylated HMOs like uh, 2FL or LNFP, which are very important. And those non-secretor mothers um, who are breastfeeding have infants that are delayed in establishment of bifidobacteria in their gut microbiota. So this is, you know, a direct uh, evidence. So this was a, this was a basis for an interesting study that was uh, done by Kirsty Jarvin and Seppel, who is currently at Rochester in New York. Um, and Kirsty has um, done um, studies with the Finnish birth cohort, and this, the results are from the nested study, uh, where she tested samples of former collected uh, from the mothers, breastfeeding mothers, uh, in the morning, and those samples were test frozen until testing. And they are very stable. HMOs are not affected by freezing and thawing. The composition of HMOs was measured by HPLC. 
and uh, samples were obtained for 39 women whose infants had cosmic protein allergy at the median age of 1.4 months, as well as from 41 uh, control mothers whose infants were healthy without uh, cosmic protein allergy at one month of age. And um, you may be familiar with the, with the heat mat, but let me just explain just uh, for those who may not be so familiar. This is a heat map of the uh, correlation between the um, HMOs and the allergic status of the infant. So the upper triangle shows the p-value for this association, the lower triangle shows the actual sperm and correlation values, and the dendrogram beneath this uh, heat map shows, uh, denotes the significant clusters um, A, B, and C that are, uh, have high statistical significance. So basically, in this study, human milk oligosaccharide levels in mothers uh, where uh, with uh, infant with cosmic protein allergy were lower versus those without cosmic protein allergy, suggesting that HMOs are very important for development of allergy uh, to cow's milk. So now I'm moving on to clinical trials, so clinical evidence. So this is hypothetical sort of uh, um, underlying baseline or rationale why we're thinking that adding HMOs to infant formula um, is a good idea. So the first question is, is infant formula with HMO well tolerated by healthy infants? I'm going to show you the uh, results of a study, a randomized controlled trial of partially hydrolyzed whey-based infant formula with uh, containing two FL, so one of those HMOs, and Bifidobacterium lactis. And this study was done in healthy infants um, early in life, since two weeks of age. They were randomized to either the test formula containing both components, so HMO and Bifidobacterium lactis, or to the control formula just containing uh, B lactis without HMO. The primary outcome from that study was the um, uh, infant gastrointestinal symptoms questionnaire, IGSQ, at six weeks of age. So it was uh, of six weeks of feeding. So it was a relatively uh, short study, but it, the study showed that the tolerance or gastrointestinal uh, um, tolerance or symptoms were exactly the same, not statistically significantly different between uh, those uh, formulas with added HMO and without HMO, both in the intention to treat analysis and pr protocol analysis, both at enrollment as well as the endpoint of the study. So this study, the message is that it, it was this partially hydrolyzed whey-based infant formula containing the HMO as well as B lactis is well tolerated uh, without any gastrointestinal uh, side effects in young infants. Another important question, does uh, infant formula with HMO support growth and reduce infections in healthy infants? So Liz gave you some you know, background on wh why is it um, possible, or how, what, what is the theoretical you know, explanation for that. So it was tested in another multi-center randomized trial um, in healthy infants. This time it was an intact cow's milk formula, but supplemented with two HMOs, 2FL and LNNT, so those are the most important ones. Um, the healthy infants were enrolled within the first two weeks of age. Uh, they were uh, formula fed. Of course, breastfed infants are in excluded from those interventions because we want to interfere with breastfeeding. And they were randomized one to one to a uh, feeding with the test formula uh, with HMO or uh, to the feeding with the control formula uh, with, without HMO. This phase of the blinded phase uh, lasted six months. Um, but the primary endpoint was weight gain through four months. Um, then the study was unblinded and continued for additional uh, six uh, months until uh, infants reached 12 months of age. Um, and the secondary endpoints included additional anthropometric measures, gastrointestinal tolerance, behavior, as well as morbidity through age 12 months. So this, uh, you know, can see clearly that there was no difference uh, in weight, uh, length, head circumference and uh, BMI Z scores between the two formulas suggesting that uh, the adding HMO to the formula is very well tolerated and thus support normal growth. Uh, additionally, uh, similar to what uh, Liz has showed you in a slightly different form, infants fed with this formula supplemented with uh, HMO had significantly fewer reported infections, bronchitis as well as lower respiratory tract infections, as well as antibiotics and antipyretics use. So you see the forest plot and you see significantly de decreased odds ratios uh, through the uh, uh, different uh, stages in the first year of life. So this is an added benefit 
of uh, including HMLs in the uh, infant formulas. So now moving on to the study that we're actually presenting at this meeting, um, which answered the question, is hypoallergenic formula with HMO safe in infants with calcium protein allergy? So this was a, a multi-center randomized clinical trial um, uh, in infants with IgE-mediated calcium protein allergy, which was conducted in 11 sites uh, in the US, which is registered at clinicaltrials.gov. And um, this is Ivory, it was called Ivory Study. Uh, the eligibility inclusion criteria were a full-term infants uh, with normal birth weight, aged between two months and four years, non-breastfed, and with physician-diagnosed Ig calcium protein allergy, which you can see the definition, and evidence of Ig sensitization by uh, serolo serology or specific Ig or positive skin test or a very high, very highly predictive laboratory test results that would give us 95% certainty that indeed, even without the history of prior e immediate reactions, those infants are truly allergic to cow's milk protein. So you can also see there are some exclusion criteria such as chronic disease or prior treatment with EHF. So the study, for, the study formulas, which are uh, where the test formula was the modified Althera, which is uh, currently available on the market in Europe um, with reduced content of extensively hydrolyzed whey protein, but with added uh, HMOs, 2FL and LNT, as you can see, this is sort of within the range uh, mostly seen in the human breast milk. Control formula was the standard Althera with a little bit higher uh, protein content without HMO, and otherwise those tests and control formulas were identical. So um, every formula that is being uh, introduced to the market, before it can be labeled hypoallergenic, it has to undergo rigorous testing to meet the hypoallergenicity criteria, which are published or established by American Academy of Pediatrics in 2000. So a formula can be considered as hypoallergenic if at minimum it has shown with 95% uh, confidence that 90% of infants with documented cow's milk allergy will not react with defined symptoms to the formula under double-blind placebo-controlled conditions. So double-blind placebo-controlled food challenge is the gold standard for food allergy diagnosis. So in this study, uh, we have randomized infants meeting the inclusion criteria uh, to the first challenge uh, that was blinded with either test formula or control formula. And then you can see that there were three subjects that were excluded for different reasons, and then they, uh, within seven days, and underwent a second blinded challenge now with a different formula. Uh, following that challenge, we had some also exclusion. So at the end, in the per protocol analysis, we had 61 infants in that group. And you can see that more for both test formula and control formula, uh, we've uh, proven that more than 90% of the subjects with 95% confidence tolerated the novel way EHF with two HMOs, confirming safety and efficacy in infants with Ig mediated cow's milk protein allergy. And this is just a different uh, way of showing you the, um, you know, uh, the modified intention to treat analysis as well as per protocol analysis, which are very similar uh, for those uh, infants test, uh, fed with the test formula con containing uh, HMOs as well as, as controlled formula. Another important question which we haven't answered yet is uh, whether this hypoallergenic way EHF with HMO support normal growth in infants with cow's milk protein allergy. And to, to, uh, to learn the answer to this question, stay tuned to the so-called cinnamon study, which is a controlled, double-blind, randomized, multi-center clinical trial of two parallel formula-fed groups designed to show non-inferiority in growth, infection rates, related drug use and fecal microbiome of infants with cow's milk protein allergy taking away EHF with HMO versus EHF with away EHF without HMO for four months. So those results should be um, uh, coming shortly. So the key messages from my presentation are that human milk oligosaccharides provide the substrate for the developing gut microbiome of young infants as well as have direct e effect on the um, uh, tear regulator cells in the gut. HMO composition of human breast milk influences development of cow's milk protein allergy. So women that produce or secrete very little of HMOs have higher risk of uh, having infants or infants from those mothers have higher risk of developing cow's milk protein allergy. 
the study that I've described, the IVORY study, is the first clinical trial of a way uh, EHF containing two HMOs. Um, and this will be presented actually tomorrow uh, at the poster discussion session 26, so you all are invited. Um, and the conclusion from the study was that the EHF with 2FL, the whey based EHF with 2FL and LNT, was tolerated by more than 90% of infants and children with IG mediated calcium protein allergy, thus meeting the rigorous criteria of the American Academy of Pediatrics for um, hyperallergenicity. Additionally, there are some interesting hypotheses that are needing further study. So um, whether the EHF with HMO, the way uh, EHF with HMO has the potential to accelerate development of tolerance in cow's milk protein allergy by modulating gastrointestinal microbiota and directly influencing T-Rex development and function, as well as whether it really reduces the frequency of infections and related drug use in infants and children with calcium protein allergy. You all know as immunologists that infants with calcium protein allergy or any food allergy have delayed maturation of the uh, immune system and they are more susceptible. They experience, they develop more uh, infections in the first uh, couple years of life. So this may be an added benefit of those formulas. Uh, with that, I'll finish and thank you very much for your attention.